So, are these, are these tools, are these new mathematical objects going to be able to help us work out what on earth is happening here? Okay, I need a bit more space, and I'll leave that, that quadratic there. Okay. When you have a quadratic, and you can't legally factorize, right? What, what do you do with that kind of thing? Uh, clearly, you use the quadratic formula, right? The quadratic formula. The quadratic formula helps you work out, okay, uh, given A, B, and C. What are the solutions to this thing, okay? Now, um, you might remember the quadratic formula, it actually comes from completing the square. We, we don't usually like completing the square very much, but it's useful. In fact, it's what I used to rewrite, uh, rewrite this as this. Do you remember this? Uh, whoops, it's a plus three equals zero, okay? Now, if I rewrite it like this, you can see all I need to do is rearrange this a little bit and make x the subject, and the solution will jump out of us, right? So here, I'm going to say, okay, I've got x plus 1 all squared equals negative 3. Now, just like here, instead of saying, oh, I have a negative number on the right-hand side, I can't take square roots, I'm just going to say, that's okay. I'm going to let us not just break the rules, just make some new rules, right? I'm going to take the square roots of both sides, that leaves me with x plus 1 on this side, and plus or minus the square root of negative 3 on this side. But I can rewrite the square root of negative 3 as root 3i, right? I've already established this. So I'm going to do two things here. Um, number one, I'm going to kick this 1 over to the other side, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. That gives me negative 1. And then I'm going to rewrite this guy here as root 3i. Okay, so it's plus or minus root 3i. So in other words, I now have an alpha and a beta. Like this is one line, but it's actually got two values in there hiding, right? What this means is that alpha is one of them, and beta is the other one. Okay, now look, does this make sense of what we've seen before? We said that the sum of the roots was negative 2. And the product of the roots is 4. Well, look at the sum. Clearly the sum works, doesn't it? Because if you add alpha and beta together, look at these guys over here, right? You know this imaginary bit? Well, there's a negative imaginary bit, a positive imaginary bit, and when you add, they just cancel each other out, okay? That just leaves you with the negative ones, and you've got two of them, so negative two. Okay? Now, the product takes a little more work. You can't just look at it and say, oh, obviously, right? So. That's okay, I'm just going to multiply, now that I know what these roots are, I'm just going to multiply them together. I can write them like this, uh, like so. Okay. Now, I can do this in one of two ways. Uh, I could just like bash out this um, the algebra here, and I can just say, oh, okay, this term times these guys, and then expand, and then I'll say this term times these guys, and then expand. But you'll notice that this will work anyway, anywhere, but these two numbers are special, right? They're not just a random pair of, of numbers that I have to expand out, they're related to each other, right? Alpha and beta, the same thing minus, the same thing plus. These are what we call, well, when you have thirds, right? Like if you saw uh, three plus root five and three minus root five, you would call these guys conjugates, right? And it's kind of what you have over here. But these aren't your grandma's conjugates, right? These have complex bits in them. So we call these guys, this is worth writing down, complex conjugates. They're complex because there's this imaginary thing flying around over here, but they're still conjugates in the way that these guys are conjugates, and we can take advantage of what conjugates do. This is A minus B times A plus B, right? A minus B, A plus B, come on, as two unit students, we know what to do with this. This is difference of squares, isn't it? Okay, now, look at it with me. If it's difference of squares, A minus B, A plus B, what's A? Uh, the A is just this first number over here, right? Negative one, so A squared, and then I'm gonna take away B squared. Now, what's B? It's gonna be root three, I. Root three, I. A squared minus B squared, right? Well, what's going to happen here? Uh, I know what to do with this one, that's just one. This is a bit weirder, but uh, I can still deal with it if I just take 
this bit, square that, take this bit, square that, okay? okay this is starting to take some shape now, okay? This is one take away. Root three times root three is three. I squared, well, the very way I defined I back in the beginning is it's the square root of negative one, right? So if you square the square root of negative one, you better get negative one, right? So this is three times negative one. That's one plus three, which, surprise, surprise, is four, okay? So this is awesome. I mean, it starts off weird. It's like, hmm, these things are strange. But it makes perfect sense of something we've already observed. You know, it's not that these roots don't exist and the, the sum and product are, are meaningless. The roots do exist, and the sum and product just happen to cancel out those imaginary parts. They just leave you with something real, okay?